head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices like Mandala. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, it's all about beautiful colors and circles and art. Today we're talking about mandalas, but in this case, a card game called Mandala. This is a two-player card game from Lookout Games, brought to us by Asmodee in the North America region. Uh, and this is a 30-minute, probably even less, card game for two players. Let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. In this two-player card game, there's six suits, if you will, and each of them look like this. There's no numbers on any of these cards, and there's the even amount of cards for each of the suits. Now, the game comes with this really nice linen play mat that folds up and fits into the box nicely. Now, each player sits on one side of these, and you're going to be playing cards into these two different mountains over the course of the game, but let's talk about what you're trying to do. Over the course of the game, you're going to be collecting cards to score. And as you collect them, the first time you get that color, you'll be placing it left to right on your score chart on the bottom. What this means is this color, all the cards you have for this at the end of the game is worth one point, where all the cards you have for this color is going to be worth four points. Uh, and so that's what you're trying to do is get these colors here into your scoring pile and then get as many as the ones of the highest point values as you can, essentially. Because at the end of the game, you're going to have a big stack of scoring cards face down. And again, each of these is going to be worth the amount of points that you find on your scoring chart. Now, the game goes back and forth in this two-player game, alternating turns. And each turn, you're basically most of the time doing one of two things. You're either playing a card to the center of one of the two mountains. And when you do that, you're going to draw three cards from the deck. And you can never have more than eight cards in your hand. Now, the cards that you place here can be a different color, or it can be one of the same colors that's already here. Now, these are the cards that will end up being collected by the players as scoring cards once this specific mountain resolves. So by playing a card here, you're sort of setting up what's going to score this round from this specific mountain. And you can play it either mountain on your turn. Now, when you play to the middle, you're only able to play one card, but you're able to draw. But if you play on your own side, like this player, you can play multiple cards as long as they're the same color. And that color does not uh, find its way in either of these other two spots, meaning it has to be the first time that color is played on this mountain entirely. Now, what this is doing is essentially giving it influence to try to win these cards. Because when this resolves, whoever has more cards on their side is going to get first choice of the scoring cards. So I fast forwarded a bit. We have five of the six colors there. Now, as soon as the sixth color is placed, then this mountain resolves. And it doesn't matter where it was placed as long as it's there. And on your turn, you're either only placing on your side or in the middle. So this resolves. We have three cards, they have two, so we would resolve first. Uh, if it was tied, actually the other player that didn't play gets to resolve it first. How this works is we have first choice of any of these three sets. So let's say we take this set. We'll tell you what you do with these in just a moment. And the other player will take this set, and then we take this set. You alternate back and forth. Now, when I took this set, the first card goes here, and the other card goes face down in that scoring pile over to the right that I showed you at the beginning. And since this is my only card, it goes here. Now, these cards themselves won't actually score the points, only cards in your score pile. So the first card here does nothing, but it does tell me what I'm focusing on to try to score two points for in future sort of rounds. And then all the cards that were played on both sides were discarded, and this gets seeded with two more cards to start the next round. And keeping in mind that players can play on either mountain at any time, it just, it's free for in that way. So most of the time you're doing one of those two things on your turn. However, if you want to, you can discard all of one color or as many as you want of one color and draw up to that many cards. This helps you get rid of cards that you, at that specific point in time in the game, you can't really do a whole lot with. Now this back and forth continues until either a player gets their card in the six scoring pile, it ends right then. And then you're simply going to take all these cards and look at what they're worth, depending on the card there, and add them up on whoever has the most is the winner. But if no players have gotten their six scoring card and the draw deck empties, you simply shuffle it up, you put a new deck here, and then when the next mountain resolves, it'll be the end of the game regardless. And whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. All right, well, there's Mandala. Uh, first, let's talk about those beautifully illustrated cards. They just look so nice on the table. Uh, people will stop by and go, wow, what are you playing? This looks so interesting. Uh, and I love that linen play mat. It, it gives it a nice touch. Uh, it's definitely aesthetically pleasing. It feels nice. Um, and it's a lot more fun to play than just playing on, on a table, for example. Uh, and I like how it folds up. It fits in the box kind of nice. And it's good quality. 
This game has simple rules, but great depth. Uh, I played this game 13 times already, uh, and I'm still learning new things to try, new, new little uh, you know, subtleties of the game, of the strategy of the game, even this many plays in for such a small, short game. That's really saying a lot. I often talk about my depth to complexity ratio, which is how deep can a game be with how simple of a rule set? And the simpler the rule set, and but the deeper you can go in the game, it, you know, the better that ratio. And this game's off the charts for that because it's 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 very simple. You're, I mean, you're literally just playing multiple cards or you're playing one card and drawing three. That most of the game, that's all you're doing. But with that, with those sets of mechanisms, man, is there a lot to think about? And I love that. You're trying to seed for the color that you want. So you get the color in the middle that you want and trying to get and collect some. You're seeding those by putting one card out on your turn and then drawing some cards. But if you do that, you're sort of tipping your hand as to which one you want. And it might get taken from you if the other player has a big hand of cards that they can throw down on their side that the color hasn't been used yet and try to steal that or keep you from that. And that's a big thing about this too in this game. Since it's two players and it's a battle of back and forth, it's not always about getting what you want, but it's also about denying your opponent what they want, because that actually might be a better net gain for you than going after something uh, that, that you want. And that's a pretty interesting thing here as well. Uh, you're also got pretty much two games going on at the same time here with the different mountains, and you're trying to decide which mountain to play on and when. And the timing of these things and back and forth just creates a really interesting uh, you, you know, s set of, of feelings of what, what am I going to do? What I want to do this and I want to do this, but I got to figure out which one do I got to do now? Because uh, again, since you can only play one color on each, you know, mountain in any of the spots, it really ramps up the tension in the game. And I like that. Uh, um, I like that if they're trying to collect a good, like, like a color that they want, like, let's say, um, they they still have their biggest scoring. Their six score pile uh, is going to be green. Uh, and now instead of you being able to them allowing them to put green in the middle You can right off the bat when a new mountain starts throw down assuming there's not green there already throw down a bunch of green Or even just one on your side making so they're not gonna be able to collect that card this 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 time uh, And it's just again these little subtle things that are just really cool when you start learning the game more and more uh, Deciding which set to collect once it's been resolved is not always obvious you just think you know what Hey, this one has three cards. I'm just gonna take it. I don't have it yet. Well, not necessarily, because if it's the first color for you, one of the cards just goes to to denote what color you know is that that point uh, set. But the other two cards will go scoring, and you go, oh, well, I'm only getting two of those cards. Two of these other cards is actually gonna be worth more points. So what do I take? Or you look at them and you go, oh, if they if I take this, they're likely to take this, and then I'm likely to take this, which means I'll have a net gain of X amount of points. But counterintuitively, if I take this one and stop them from getting this, they'll probably take this and I'll get this. That will actually net me two more points, even though it's not intuitive. I love that aspect of this. When you look at it, you think it's simple, but it really isn't. There's more to meets the eye here. I like always like when you can play with the end game timing in a game. This one, same thing. Uh, you get to the end and you're like, oh, I could take my last color and end the game, but I, I'm not sure if I'm winning or I don't think I'm winning. So instead, I'll take the cards from my five pile instead, not choosing not to end the game. I want to let it go on a little bit longer. And I like that aspect of it too. And I like at the beginning, you get these little sort of two seated scorecards. And that sort of creates like a press your luck aspect because you want those to be the higher scoring. So if I have like a green and an orange dealt to me at the beginning of the game, and in the first round there's a green and or an orange in one of the mountains, I don't want to win that because that card's only going to be worth one and it's already scored for me at the beginning of the game. So I'm going to try to not get those. And it's just a fun little game and it's like how far do you want to push it? You're like, ooh, do I want this to be my four later on? You're like, no, let's try to make it the five, right? But the game could end with the opponent getting to their six before we even get to get that card. Oh man, really cool. This game feels like it's a thousand year old classic game, but it also feels modern. I love this game. Um, now on the negative side, as easy as this game is, sometimes it's also easy to forget just the little differences between playing as many cards as you want on your side and not drawing, or just playing one card in the middle and drawing. And it's simple, but sometimes you just kind of forget it. I would have loved to have seen, so there's just these little icons on the mat just to sort of remind you the player aids aren't very good. I would have rather seen just a small little icon on the mat to just help you remember those certain things. I mean, after handfuls of plays, it's every once in a while you still kind of screw that up. 
Um, so that's pretty much it on the negative side. Now this game, I'm going to say, is in the same breath of, say, a Lost Cities or a Jaipur, which, in my opinion, are like two of the best staple card games 30 minutes or less for two players. This game is in the same sentence as both of those, and that's huge praise. Uh, if you're also looking for maybe a newer game that's two players like this, also check out Haven, which is another fun little, th uh, you know, from Red Raven Games, a beautiful one. Uh, I'll put the link to that video below, and you should be able to click up there and watch that video. But overall, this game's amazing, so it's getting a saxophone serenade, because I'm keeping it, which means I have to get rid of something else to keep it in my collection. So let's hit it with a saxophone serenade. Did you miss the Game Topper 2.0 Kickstarter? Have no fear, it's not too late to get in on the ultimate gaming accessory. Convert your table into a high quality gaming table with a fully portable Game Topper system and take advantage of some of the best 3mm premium gaming mats in the industry. New styles, new sizes, and new accessories can be yours. Upgrade every game you play by late backing now at GameToppersLLC.com.